Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country. Together, we're going to unlock America's glorious destiny, and we're going to achieve the most incredible future. Ladies and gentlemen, some are calling it the biggest comeback in history. Now, this may be a bit of an exaggeration in keeping with Donald Trump's vibe, but fact is that the dawn is back in the White House and how. After an election campaign filled with dark rhetoric and deep polarization, Donald Trump has won a decisive victory over Kamala Harris. Now, this makes him only the second president in America's history and the first in over two centuries to win a non-consecutive second term at the Oval Office. In the end, it wasn't even a close fight. Each of the seven battleground states that were expected to hold the keys to victory swung decisively towards Trump. As we speak, Trump's Republican Party has already crossed the magic mark of 270 electoral votes and given how projections are at the moment, is set to post its best performance in 40 years. To add to their joy, the Grand Old Party has also seized back control of the Senate after four years and also retained the lower House of Representatives. As a result, Team Trump is truly poised, in his own words, to lead America into its quote-unquote golden age. Listen in. So I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. And every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you and with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe, and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. You know, we had no wars. Four years, we had no wars, except we defeated ISIS. We defeated ISIS in record time. And, but we had no wars. They said, he will start a war. I'm not going to start a war. I'm going to stop wars. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country and to restore America to greatness. And now we are going to fulfill that mission together. We're going to fulfill that mission. The task before us will not be easy, but I will bring every ounce of energy, spirit, and fight that I have in my soul to the job that you've entrusted to me. This is a great job. There's no job like this. This is the most important job in the world. Now, shortly after that victory speech, Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to X to congratulate his good friend Trump. Trump and Prime Minister Modi's camaraderie has been on full display many times in the past during events like Howdy Modi, which was in Texas in 2019, and then Namaste Trump in Ahmedabad in 2020 at the Motera Stadium. But beyond all the bromance and bonhomie, Trump's return to the White House could mark a significant, possibly testing, turning point in Indo-US relations. Let's first look at the bright side. On the bright side, his anti-China stance, along with India's interests, 
making them natural allies in the region. Plus, Trump has declared Hindu interests a priority which could foster stronger ties between the two nations. However, there are concerns about Trump's America first stance and his labeling India as a trade abuser. It may harm Indian exports and investments. This stance might also lead to stricter immigration policies impacting Indian Americans and professionals seeking H-1B visas, something that Mr. Trump has been quite vocal about in his intentions. And let's not forget the potential economic consequences, including inflation and a weakened rupee. So will the Trump-Modi dosti drive diplomacy into a high gear? Or will trade tensions weigh down? Let me take that question to someone who understands America very well, someone who served there as an ambassador. Uh, thank you very much, Miraji, for joining us on the broadcast. Always a pleasure to have you here. Mira Shankar is an ex-ambassador to the United States of America. Miraji, Mr. Trump is back in business and he's back stronger than ever. Can I ask you, you know, for an overview, for a broader picture on what this means for India and what it means for the world, given how volatile the man can be? Well, it means that... A, there is a decisive verdict in the U.S. election, and that should give some mm. degree of assurance to the world because uncertainty for a prolonged period would have uh, led to greater global anxiety. Uh, secondly, the first Trump presidency... Mm. Uh, meant that he was relatively an unknown factor. Now most countries have some idea of what mm. President Trump is like and how to deal with him. So I think it is not going to be so full of surprises as the first presidency. Uh, mm. The fact that he will likely mm. win the Senate, the Republicans will likely win the Senate, and the House of Representatives, plus there is a conservative Supreme Court, means that there are very few checks and balances on what President Trump can do. You know, institutional checks and balances have been weakened, and he will pretty much have a free hand in terms of fashioning the policies and approaches that he wants to. <clears throat> Miraji, then let's specifically now focus on India and what Trump's triumph means for India and Indians who work in the United States of America. Do you see turbulent times ahead for H-1B visa holders, given Mr. Trump's stance that the program is bad for Americans, bad for U.S. citizens, because it takes away jobs from them? Well, the question is, will he... Uh, make it more difficult to extend H-1B visas of those who are already there in the U.S.? Will he make it more difficult to process green card applications by Indians who are already there in the United States and entitled to apply for citizenship? Would it mean that he will uh, have a more restrictive uh, approach to processing H-1B visa applications by Indian and U.S. companies uh, who seek Indian expertise in terms of the contracts that they have uh, with uh, uh, Indian companies. But I do think that there is also a pragmatic streak that Trump has because there is a recognition that the U.S. needs talent also. If it is to really compete with China in the realm of technology. So he has said that those who have master's degrees will be allowed to work for one year and, um, you know, tempering somewhat his overall fairly restrictive approach on this mm -hmm. issue. Plus, US companies have been facing a skill gap. <clears throat> How did the whole H-1B visa program start? It started because 
there was a huge gap in terms of skill availability in specialized areas in the United States. And it is US companies like Google, like Facebook, like uh, Microsoft and others who are some of the biggest users of the H-1B program. Uh, uh, so I think mm. if they uh, really say that it's going to impact their business, while he could put pressure, I don't think that he will bring the program to a halt. Uh, the fact also is that Mr. Trump himself has admitted that he has used people with H1, uh, H-1B visas in his own businesses. But Mr. Uh, but, but Meera Ji, fact is that, uh, I mean, if you look at what he said on the campaign trail, in true Trump style, even this H-1B visa policy seems to lack, or, or, or an opposition to it, seems to lack consistency. In his campaign trail, he has also said that all students, irrespective of where they come from, these students who graduate from top-end U.S. colleges like Stanford, like Harvard, they will immediately get a green card along with their college degree. Do you think he'll say, see that through, or is it just full-time rhetoric? It is, but, you know, if he actually shifts to a merit-based policy for green card processing rather than a country quota policy mm. for green card processing, then it would mean that Indians who have a huge backlog could get processed quicker because they are amongst the uh, group with the maximum university uh, degrees, especially higher university degrees in science, maths, technology, and so on, engineering. So if he actually moves mm -hmm. to a merit-based approach to immigration, I think um, uh, it could help mm -hmm. the backlog of Indian green card applications. But we don't know if mm -hmm. he's serious about it or it's just a kind of statement in the blue or in the air because he says different things at different times. So you oh. have to see how his policy is actually fashioned, uh, the focus is on illegal migration. He wants to staunch, complete building his border wall, Correct. Uh, staunch the flow of illegal immigrants into the US. And he has also threatened mass deportations of the 11 million or more uh, illegal immigrants who have been present in the US for some time now. So that itself is going to take up a lot of energy. Uh, whether he will distinguish between legal okay. and illegal immigration is the question. Okay, Meeraji, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much for joining us and giving us your perspective on Mr. Trump's win and what it means for India. Introducing my guest this evening, Sanjay Jha is an author, joining us on the broadcast. Vibhuti Jha uh, is an ex-Republican candidate uh, for the New York Assembly. Also, Sanjay Jha's brother, just by the way, but ideologically, uh, the North Pole and the South Pole, and you'll find out why in just a bit. P.V. Subramanya is author. He's also a personal finance expert, founder of Subramani. Uh, com joining us on the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Why can I not say Sanjay Jha? Uh, maybe we'll get to him in just a bit. Vibhuti Jha, thank you very much. Good to see you after a long time. Can I ask yes, you, please. Mr. Jha, uh, there are apprehensions in India as far as Mr. Trump is concerned. Look, I understand that traditionally we've had good relations with the Republicans, right? Traditionally, India has had very good relations with Republican presidents. That's, that's been our history. But Mr. Trump is volatile, he's inconsistent, uh, he's erratic. And the big fear, as far as India is concerned, is over trade tariffs. Because he's saying India is a tariff abuser, they tax our, uh, you know, they tax our imports too much. Harley Davidson, uh, Harley Davidson, may 150% tax hai. They are tariff kings, tit for tat tariff, etc., etc. That can't bode well for a relationship uh, which, well, yeah. we'll see where it goes. 
Thank you, Shreya. It's good to see you after a very long time. And I'm also very happy to see Subramani on the show. Uh, you know, we follow each other on the Twitter, and today I'm seeing him live. Uh -huh. Having come to that, I want to tell you that, uh, you know, Trump has become a monster because the media played him out to be what he is. You know, you can say erratic, you can say whatever you like, but he's been remarkably mm -hmm. consistent in his approach. This is what J.D. Vance said when in his debate, when he was asked by the interviewers, that you have always opposed Trump's policies, you have ridiculed him as a character, you have done this, but yet you have become his vice presidential candidate. Remember what J.D. Vance said? I also was taken in by the media hype about him. When I met him, got to know him, he is not any of those things that you say. This is a very important part of the thing. You, you are mainstream media, I am in media. We present people in a manner that we perceive it. But there was in the US, for example, today all the channels here, the CNN specifically, admitted that we totally missed the plot. The Democratic Party totally misunderstood the plot. Mm -hmm. They thought they can take the constituents for granted. Mm -hmm. They took the blacks for granted. They took the Latinos for granted. They took us Indians for granted. And as a result of which, the result is so very obvious. Mm -hmm. As the saying goes, she has done nothing, not even one. As we all know now, the blue wall has collapsed. So the point of the matter is, why did it happen? Because Trump connected Trump. with various segments of the voters. You talk about immigration. The Democratic Party ended up becoming a party in conflict with itself. Their own agenda and their own precepts, they were totally miles apart. So when you are talking about freebies to be given to people, where is the money going to come from? This country is in 90% private sector. Is Private sector runs this place. Mom and pop shops, small businesses, mm -hmm. they run this country apart from the mega billionaires who run the big enterprises. Those mm. people were totally concerned that they were their price okay. rise has completely decimated that. So Kamala Harris saying that price rise is not so bad, mm. she couldn't possibly deny the element that you people, common people like you and I, I don't know about you, I say myself, suffered on account of massive price rises. They hurt. Immigration hurt. So New York True. mayor, if he's demanding $500 per day to house in a five-star hotel an immigrant, think about it. We live in an era driven by tectonic shift brought by technology in the way we communicate. We know everything instantly. Nobody reads to, needs to read Times of India or New York Times to gather news. We have multiple sources, and people saw the truth and the farce. And that's where you see the outcome here. And I'm glad. I'm glad okay. about this outcome. Let okay. me put Sanjay it. Ja. Okay, Sanjay Jha. Then... Uh, okay, Sanjay Jha. Okay, Sanjay Jha, look, fact is people succeed for a reason. Donald Trump has succeeded for a reason. And for good or for bad, he is the president of the United States of America. Now, Vibhuti ji is saying that you... You know, you are projecting, you're projecting him as someone who may or may not be good for India, but that's just a projection. That that, that that's misleading. Uh, mm -hmm. It's because mainstream media has misinterpreted Mr. Trump that he is not the inconsistent, erratic, crazy guy that the mainstream media has painted him as. So when it comes to H-1B visas, for example, something that a large chunk of Indians. Uh, you know, uh, many, many households across this country will be affected with, impacted with. Uh, yes, he has a stand against H-1B visas, uh, but even he knows that the country needs talent, so he will not be scrapping the scheme. He may make it more difficult to get H-1B visas, uh, but, but he'll moderate things out. Well, good evening. I want to just make a couple of points. Obviously, Mr. Trump has won, the Republicans have won, and when you win, mm -hmm. everything that you did, including all your misdemeanors, get rationalized as part of some political acumen. Here is the truth. The truth is that I think all pollsters got it wrong again. Having said that, I don't think the mainstream media here is to be blamed. I want to give you a couple of quotes that are fascinating. Number one, the chief of his own, of his former chief of staff, has called Donald Trump a fascist. This is, by the way, somebody who has worked with him 
called him a fascist. Mitch McConnell, the Senate minority leader, who now probably will be part of the majority team, called him a despicable human being and stupid and unfit for office. This was not the mainstream media. These were the Republicans. For God's sake, Kamala Harris is lost, and I'm sure there will be a biopsy of what the Democrats could have done better. But can it be denied here that Donald Trump may be the president, and now the Supreme Court will also kind of pardon him of all his ills because of the immunity that the president has been given, but he has been charged or convicted for felony. I mean, including sexual favors, uh, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, trying to create an insurrection against his own government and tax concealment uh, of data. So these are very serious crimes, civil or criminal. I think the bottom line is this, that America today has voted across, I think the length and breadth of the country for Donald Trump, not the Republican Party, because he's literally overtaken the Republican Party. It doesn't sound like a conservative party. It sounds like a party which has got a very extreme fundamentalism written over it. Did you see something interesting today, Shaurya, that when he was addressing the crowd in the night, he actually attacked CNN. And he's gone on record to say that uh, you know he will use the army against his enemies within. Now, these are not signs of a man who is either mentally or morally fit for the office. And I'm quoting the New York Times and The Economist. I live in India. And frankly, good luck to the Americans. If the, Mr. Trump does well for America, good luck. If he does well for India, we'll be more than happy. But at the moment, just because he's won, let us not start making him out to be a statesman. I mean, the man is a monumental embarrassment, and I can say so because right now I'm not an official voice of the Congress party. And I do believe that, you know, he comes with a baggage that should worry the world at large. Okay, P.V. Subramanya, both Sanjay Jha and Vibhuti Jha didn't answer my questions. Uh, you know, the focus of my debate was, is he going to be good for India or bad for India? Since they haven't, I request you to do that, both on the H-1B visa front and the trade front. What do we expect? See, first of all, I don't know uh, the poor quality of people we have in India and in the U.S. They go and vote for people who are fascists, who are above the party. Um, they go beyond the party. Uh, Trump is beyond Republicans. But anyway, having spent uh, 10 seconds on that, uh, he is a little anti-China, so some favor to India is possible. Second, I think he will allow uh, shale oil production. Mm. He'll have uh, other oil production, so oil prices could dip, which is good for India. Uh, if H-1B visas don't happen, the work will shift to India. Mm. You cannot just take somebody who is a 10th pass or a 12th pass to do the work mm. which Indian uh, engineers are doing there. So, so what, right, what will happen is the work will shift to India. So Microsoft will employ more people in India. Google will employ more people in India. So that will happen. So I don't think we should worry about visa. He's very clear that he needs skilled people. Are you trying to tell me he will not accept mm. neurosurgeons, but he'll accept Syrian immigrants, something is wrong with you. He's a businessman. He means business. So I don't think he'll do anything stupid. Mm -hmm. Another thing is during elections, people make many claims. They may not stick to all of them. He will do what is good for India. I mean, he he's expected to do what is good for uh, America, right? Just because Sundar Pichai becomes a CEO in Google, does it mean he'll do good for India? Mm -hmm. No, he's expected to do good for Google. So Trump will do what is good for uh, U.S. He's a little eccentric. Mm. Maybe, you know, every day morning you have to open the papers and see what he says. That's a little scary. Uh, but he's the only guy who can talk to um, Putin. He can talk to mm. Ukraine. You can talk to China. And he can talk to that little man in North Korea. Right? So he has got his communication right. He's the only president in mm. for a long memory who has not started a war. So I don't see those as problems. Yes, some defense... Uh, uh, can happen with India. So your Hindustan aeronautics and all could be beneficiaries. I don't see too much uh, anti-Trump. And let's face mm. it, the, uh, the American balance sheet needs a lot of cleanup. 
the kind of interest that they are paying on the borrowing is unbelievable look mm. at you may hate china but you still have to pay interest for the bonds that china owns this is so tragic that america pays interest to china for the bonds and that money could be used against us but you have no choice because you have those bonds and you don't have money to retire those bonds so <clears throat> he's a good businessman i'm sure he'll do turn around techniques mm. some of that may lead to some more inflation which might mean interest rates could uh, remain high for some time but i don't think we should worry about all this he's a businessman his last four years uh, previous four years rather were not so bad uh, so i think we should play it by the year i don't think he can be bad mm. for us uh, kamla would have been a disaster for us so i think this is good a lot of my friends are moaning like uh, vibhuti says i don't know why but indian support modi here and uh, kamla there uh, to me that's quite surprising but uh, i don't i think we should uh, play it by the year see what happens i don't think it'll be too bad for india but you know this is interesting the fact is vibhuti ji would you want to come in here the fact is that uh, the indian american voter that has traditionally <clears throat> been democrat and has you know uh, and has had leanings towards the democrats has turned to the republicans this time maybe not on mass but to a certain degree have vibhuti ji why is that it can't be just the inflation given the fact that the indian american population is amongst the highest earners uh, as far as the indian uh, as far as the american economy is concerned the indian community figured out one thing very importantly most of us indians live in blue states california new york washington you know massachusetts and all so they believe in blue states we want to be part of the winning team political team so we vote democrat but people like us who trafficked who tra who traveled from democrat to independent to republican we began to see the way the democratic party is taking indian votes and indian political contributions for granted every single anti india anti hindu here and against india they were all initi initiated conceptualized and tried to make successful in democrat run states and we began to question the authenticity of democratic party how they were systematically taking us for granted and indians eyes woke up literally literally they became awakened and we ask this question of indian community why are you voting for democrats when they are totally against us whether it was a caste bill whether it was a hindutva thing dismantling hindutva 370 35a everything was designed in democrat run states and people began to feel difficult to deal with that in addition you have seen how the in the name of freedom okay in the name of freedom they were encouraging secessionist practices if supporting secessionist people here that was a problem and this time i believe we suspected that the traditional 80 20 votes to uh, democratic party it would shrink to 60 40 if not 50 50 and i think it has okay. happened the indians have uh, woken up in okay. that to that reality that democrats okay. are not Sanjit? our party sanjay ja okay Uh, Sanjay ji it was a choice for america to make and they have made their choice my point is if mr trump i mean any anyone who wants to come to power will have to put his country first like mr trump is putting america first when it comes to trade mm -hmm. tariffs when it comes to h1b visas etc my my simple point is if he is good for india if he has a good working chemistry with prime minister modi which he clearly does should we care hamare liye to acha hai na baki karta rahe jo kare Yeah, valid question. Uh, you know, I just want to start by first objecting to one of the gentlemen who spoke earlier, and he made some very disparaging remarks. I don't want to call his remarks stupid or absurd or very ill-timed or very opportunistic, but I will let that be. But let me answer your question very quickly. I think where America is concerned, let's try and understand that America is a true blue capitalist economy. it is one of the best examples of free market to the best extent that you can possibly define it and they are going to be driven entirely by their own interests you know don't forget that there is this whole 20% tariff that donald trump has talked about and india's exports haven't been great we all know that and you are going to suffer now here is the here is the problem if you look at narendra modi's much hyped atmanirbhar it was more or less an inward looking policy 
if you listen to Trump, he talks about dismantling, you know, foreign uh, manufacturing by the American companies and getting them all onshore. Now, it will come at a very high cost. It could be very inflationary for the U.S. consumer. Now, how these dynamics play out, we'll have to wait and watch. But here is the truth and a political truth that we need to recognize. Okay. Don't forget, Mr. Modi went with Abki Bar Trump Sarkar. You know, a lot of the nationalists on your show are very, even they, they intrigue me, they fascinate me. Actually, shouldn't they have been hoping for Kamala to win? Because at least you get a person who's of Indian origin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But no, they rather prefer a white man Trump because he's more Islamophobic, because he's anti-immigrant. So that's the reality of the times that we need to face. The unpopular well, opinion. There is the a Desi team. connect to this White House as well, to the incoming team as well. Uh, but, but there is a Desi connect uh, to the incoming team now at the White House. Uh, Sanjay Jha, we leave it there. Vibhuti Jha, thank you very much. And PV Subramanya, thank you very much. This was a good discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, just taking forward what Sanjay Jha said, with Kamala Harris losing, India may have lost one Desi connect to the White House, but it has also gained one. Meet Usha Vance, the trailblazing Indian-American lawyer who is set to become the United States' first Indian origins second lady. With her husband and Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, set to take oath as vice president, let's take a closer look at the accomplished woman behind the rising political star. Kamala Harris might not be making it to the White House after all. But that doesn't mean there is no Desi Connect at the Oval Office. I want to be uh, the first to congratulate our great, now I can say, Vice President-elect of the United States, J.D. And his absolutely remarkable and beautiful wife, Usha Bez. Exit Kamala, enter Usha Vance, the immensely successful woman behind the very successful man who is set to be America's next vice president. Born to Indian immigrant parents in California, Usha grew up with a strong emphasis on education. She graduated summa cum laude from Yale University and went on to earn advanced degrees from Cambridge and Yale Law. Usha's impressive resume includes clerkship with Chief Justice John Roberts and Judge Brett Kavanaugh. She's also worked for top law firms handling civil litigation and appeals. In 2014, Usha married J.D. Vance and they have three children together. Despite their different faith backgrounds, Usha is Hindu, J.D. is Christian, they share a strong commitment to family and public service. As J.D. Vance's political star soared, Usha took on a more public role, introducing him at the Republican National Convention and joining him on the campaign trail. My background is very different from J.D.'s. I grew up in San Diego, in a middle-class community, with two loving parents, both immigrants from India, and a wonderful sister. That JD and I could meet at all, let alone fall in love and marry, is a testament to this great country. A talented lawyer, a devoted wife, and now the second lady of the United States. As Usha Vance's star continues to soar, India wishes its new Desi girl all the very best. Mirror Report, Mirror Now.